Hi, this is Angus at LabVac. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to change the outer shaft seal on an Edwards RV vacuum pump. Um, to do this you're going to need a couple of Allen keys, as you can see here. This is a 5mm for the larger bolts, a 3mm for a couple of the smaller ones. And um, I'll show you as we go through the spare parts that you're going to need um, and exactly how to fit them. And then at the end, I'll put up a card that shows you the part numbers should you need to order any of these things. So first of all, we're going to disconnect the mains lead and make sure the pump's safe. We're also going to need to be wearing gloves for this operation because um, you may have some contamination on some of the parts that you're going to remove once we get inside the pump. So I'll start by putting on a pair of gloves and then we can get right into it. Next thing you're going to need to do is to drain the oil out of the pump. Now this one's already drained for the sake of efficiency um, and you can see my other videos about how to go about doing that in the safest way. So to get started you've got to remove four screws from the cover plate of the motor here. Um, I loosened these already so they're ready to come out and the cover plate just lifts off. However Normally after these pumps have been running for a long time, the plastic parts around here tend to weld themselves together with the heat. So it can be a little bit difficult, but provided you've taken out the four screws, you can then use a, a, a flat blade just to work around the edges uh, until it comes loose and remove that. Next thing to do is to tip the pump up onto its end, so the oil box down so that the motor's up in the air, like that. And at this point you can take the 5mm Allen key and work round the four bolts that hold the motor in place. They're difficult to see, I can tell you, but uh, they'll come out easily enough from those four corners. Now you can take the base plate off the pump, which does make it a little bit easier to get to a few things, but isn't actually necessary as such. The base plate's down here. With those four bolts removed, the motor will just lift off. Might take a little bit of wriggling. So with that removed, you can see now we've got a handle which is now loose. Take that out and put it with the motor, make sure it goes back on at the end. And then in the centre here is the coupling. This is a, a rubber part that um, connects between the motor and the pump and it's elastic. So you want to make sure that that's still soft, otherwise it'll crack up. If it is hardened off, then you need to replace that. Next thing is to uh, disconnect the coupling aluminium part here and to make that easier you need to take off the side panel which is here. For this you use the smaller allen key and there are two screws and then you can lift the panel out of the way and you can see it's a real one. Um, then you go back to the larger allen key, undo the bolt that holds the coupling in place and lift it off. And now you've reached the seal carrier and this is the part that we're actually going to be looking to replace. Um, you can buy the parts for this in a number of different ways. Um, if you buy individual parts you'll have a replacement carrier like this perhaps or you might reuse the one that's there and then in addition to that you'll have the shaft seal itself and you can also use one of these spacers um, and those assemble together like that. Alternatively you can order a different part number and you'll get those pre-assembled. 
I would recommend going for the pre-assembled kit. The reason being that uh, if you take the seal out of the pump it can be difficult to remove from the carrier and you also really need a, a bearing press or um, a bearing driver kit in order to seat the seal properly into the carrier. So the pre-assembled one is a good move. You'll also have a yellow gasket like this and we'll see where that goes in just a moment. So to remove the old seal you need to undo the two allen bolts that are here with your 5mm key. And as they come out, if you move them directly to the adjacent hole which is threaded, just drive the bolt in so it's secure, but don't tighten it down. And then do the same with the other one. And what this allows you to do is use those bolts to actually jack the plate out of the position. So if it is quite stuck, it just gives you a bit of extra driving power. And you can see now that that's starting to move. And that's the old plate coming away with the seal in place. Once it's loose, you can pull the whole thing out like that. And then underneath you can see the old gasket, which again we're going to replace. So lift that out. And then the new parts go in just in the reverse order. The gasket is actually printed and the gasket material is only on one side of this material so you can read on here it says gas uh, cartridge side printed on there and that is going to face downwards onto the pump and you just need to turn it around until you can see the two holes clearly that you can screw the bolts back into. Then take the bolts that you removed away from the old seal carrier Again, just loosely fit them into the threaded holes on the new one and then you can use those to hold the seal carrier as you push it down into place. So it's going to sit on there, lined up to the bolt holes on the cartridge and just push it down into place. And as it goes down just check it visually around the seal to make sure it hasn't caught if it does, it's no problem, just lift it out carefully and press it down again. Then put the bolts into the correct positions. Tighten them down and as you do so, try to get an even force on the two bolts. So a couple of turns on each side. Till they're snug. And then to be sure it's all tight, you can turn your Allen key around, go in from the side, and this is where you get access with the panel removed, just to give them a last tightening off, like that. So once that's done, the rest of it's very straightforward. The coupling drops back on. Remember to tighten up the bolt, otherwise it'll be very noisy and it'll lead to premature failure of the other parts. And with that in place, you can then put the, the rubber back in or fit a new one if you're going to do that. Do put the handle back in at this stage and then lift the motor on. You need to check the orientation of the coupling just to make sure that it fits together nicely. But it should then click back in place like that. Fit the bolts and you're ready to go.